Okay, in this evaluation, I'm going to use a criteria framework from this paper here, The Role of Usability Research in Designing Children's Computer Products by Hannah Risden, Javinsky and Alexander. Um, this is available at research.microsoft.com/users/marycz/druin98.htm, and in this um, criteria, they've got a guideline for design here for working with children's products online, and it's broken into activities, instructions, and screen design. I'm going to use this framework to um, evaluate this website, which is um, qbs.com. Um, which is aimed at preschoolers and based on a preschool British TV series. And um, from the support section, this is targeted to an audience of preschoolers, uh, preschoolers under the supervision of their parents. So, thinking about the design, um, under activities, Hannah et al. said that um, design activities should be inherently interesting and challenging so children will want to do them for their own sake. Well we'll see a lot of um, activities in this quick five minute evaluation. Um, I think the main proof of this is my own children have got um, two preschoolers and they love this site and they want to go back um, and this is the one they prefer to use this, of all websites. I think that's um, ultimate proof of its intrinsic interest. And the Activities, um, Hannah et al. says, um, design activities should allow for expanding complexity and support children as they move from one level to the next. So, just going to um, show you one section of this. Okay, um, this is a maze. Um, it practices children's uh, fine motor skills. They have to use the arrow keys on the keyboards to um, get through and as the levels progress the controls are exactly the same but the complexity of the maze is increased so I think this is um, you know, it does show expanding complexity and also, the re, um, another thing that Hannah et al. said that is the design should be supportive, should have supportive reward structures that take children's developmental level and context of use into account. Well, here we got um, as the complexity of the maze increases, also the rewards increase. Here I um, have to collect some stars before I can move on to the next stage. Okay, um, under instructions, well, um, Hannah et al. said that um, the, the designer should present instructions in an age-appropriate format. Okay, well, we've got big icons here, which is um, very easy to, f to use visually. Okay, um, I'm not going to bother with the next level, but we'll go back to this. I'm not sure how much this is picking up the audio coming out from the um, from the game itself, but there's audio instructions which are obviously age appropriate. The audience they're targeting would not be able to read, um, but they are spoken and written, and it's clear from the page what they have to do. We're just going to go into this stage now. Okay, I think this is fairly clear even without um, being able to read the instructions what they have to do. It's a very familiar game to young children um, and they would be with a supervisor anyway so they could help. Um, so I think the, the instructions are easy to remember. Um, the text used is large and it's sans serif so it's easy to read on the screen which helps young readers and there's a high contrast black on white at all times. And the character voices are the same as in the TV series, and the sounds are the same, so there's mimicry there. It's known to the young users. Um, Hannah et al. says that on-screen character intervention should be supportive rather than distracting. Um, I think this is the case here. The on-screen characters speak to the user. So if we um, 
do this. Okay, the on-screen character tells them to try again, um, giving them encouragement and congratulates them, but it doesn't get in the way of the task. Um, and there's feedback, written feedback as well, although users can't be expected to read this, but for the supervisor or for older children. Hannah Retali also say that um, should allow children access to control access to instructional information. Well, there's no way of actually getting the instructions again for this um, particular activity. The written rubrics are available most of the time, but can be taken over by feedback. Um, maybe this is something the designers could have considered more. For screen design, um, one of the in the framework it says that design icons should be uh, visually meaningful to children well let's go back and have a look okay we've got some um, design icons here they're all very sort of um, they look very useful and these icons are fairly um, consistent throughout and um, the only abstract one is this learning wall one but uh, people, uh, users who would know the TV series would understand where that was coming from um, the, one of the things Hannah et al. says uh, roll over audio animation and highlighting to indicate where to find functionality this is a good example when I roll over I get visual and audio feedback and same on the, the main splash page when I roll over I get audio feedback as well as visual feedback um, that there's some functionality there um, one last thing is about cursor design to help communicate functionality and um, there's an example of this here for the most part it's just a normal arrow or a hand but here there's also a um, another character from the TV series which is a paintbrush this is one area where I think there might be an issue um, uh, does the functionality happen with the cursor or with the tip of the paintbrush I think this might ca you cause a little bit of confusion um, and it might be more obvious that it should be the paintbrush when in fact it is actually the traditional cursor um, to conclude, um, it's more than just gratuitous animations and funny noises, as Hannah et al. Um, would expect, and um, I think generally a very good website for the target audience.